Speaking of mid, it's actually a good thing that updates from time to time in Marvel Future Fight are mid. And I think despite how contrary this may sound to everything else I say on the channel, I think having sort of bad updates from time to time is actually a good thing for the longevity of the game. And I will explain. <laughs> But first off, you're probably thinking that I'm crazy. And you're probably thinking, listen, Alex, the Fantastic Four update's not hitting for me. I have no one to build. Sure, I could do Human Torch, whatever. But besides that, there's no one to build. They're too expensive. The team synergy is not quite strong enough, right? It's not quite meta enough. And that's essentially what comes down, what it comes down to and what these uh, these updates sort of live and die on. Because obviously, you have updates where they introduce new content. I'm, I'm obviously never talking about those updates. When they introduce things like Dispatch, when they introduce like Dormammu, GBR, whatever, like this is just straight, this is content. Those, those updates are amazing. But when the updates are focused around characters, that's where the, the update sort of, it seems like the update lives or dies based on how strong the character are, is, right? So even though, whatever, the Sentry update didn't have any new content or, you know, whatever, the Jean Grey update didn't have any new content when they released Dark Phoenix, because they released such a strong character, right? Because they released such a strong uniform, um, players are, 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 are happy. They're like, sweet, I have a new fun project to build. I can take my time, blah, 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 and I can build this character. That's how the majority of players react. And that's good. That makes sense. But we actually need bad updates sprinkled in between at times. It sounds like I want a lot of bad updates, but like for every, let's say, three good updates or four good updates, we need one kind of kind of bad update, kind of kind of mid update. Um, and the reason for that is basically uh, to give players things to skip. I don't talk about this very often on the channel because I don't I don't know I don't like to I don't like to talk about it this way and I feel like it's listen the, at the end of the day with 300 characters whatever near near 300 characters there's somebody for everybody right but at the same time I can understand that someone is watching and their favorite character is the thing someone is watching and their favorite character is um, Gore or whoever right and so if i sit here and tell you like we need skip updates where where they release star lord and he's really trash or whatever they need we need skip updates where they make the fantastic four too expensive uh that kind of shits on you know some players uh best uh, you know favorite characters the most excited character. death proof right a good friend of mine was really excited mr fantastic is one of his favorite characters i don't want to sit here telling him it's a skip update and it's terrible at the same time right i'm not going to tell anybody oh you have to get these uniforms right so I try to I try to straddle the line between, you know, I want to give good advice for sure. I want to give advice where people are going to be spending their crystals wisely. But I also don't want to sit here just shitting on everything, right? You don't want to do that. You definitely don't want to do that. But the truth is we actually do need bad updates because it's healthier for the game long term. And it's healthier for the game long term because it gives people things to skip. And basically... The only thing you have to uh, to do, the only sort of mental exercise you have to do to figure out if this makes sense or not, is ask yourself, if every update was a banger, what would happen? Do you think the game would be in a better state if every single update moved the meta forward a little bit, right? Let's say the Fantastic Four were now the team to beat. They were now like the top dogs. So everybody that invested in Sentry, they're frantically trying to unequip their brilliant Conquest CTPs because they got to put it on Mr. Fantastic or Invisible Woman. They're looking at their their newly minted Tier 4 Thanos and Silver Surfer, and they're like, oh no, I have to dismantle these guys. I got to take all their Odin's Blessings off and move them over to this new team. And then, of course, inevitably, right, in a couple of weeks, in, in three weeks, whatever, two weeks, three weeks, when the next update comes out, the Fantastic Four team is going to get replaced again, right? So that's really the alternative. And and I, that is actually terrifying. And I don't mean to rag on Marvel Strike Force. Uh, I do rag on Marvel Strike Force quite a bit. But this is basically what's happening to Marvel Strike Force. So I, I genuinely encourage you guys, if you're curious, you can actually see in real time what happens to a game when... Not only they make the game uh, not free to play friendly by making things difficult to obtain without spending money. That's that's honestly a, a big issue with why Strike Force is struggling, is their lack of like free to play options. But also because they make every single um, new team the best. The, every single new team is the best team, and you need another very new, very recent team in order to counter them. 
And that's another thing that I think Marvel Future Fight does really well, where you can have characters that were released a year ago. You can have, or, or uniforms, I should say. You can have uniforms for characters that were released almost two years ago, and they can still compete on some level in the meta. Now, is Jean Grey going to, you know, carry you all the way to, to rank one against Sentry, Silver Surfer, Thanos, etc.? No, she's not going to carry you all the way to number one. Can you be the top dog? Can you be the number one player um, with, with outdated meta in, in something like PvP? No, you can't. I mean, and same thing goes for PvE. You can't be, uh, you know, if you're rocking up with Ant-Man Tier 4 and Black Widow Tier 4, you can't be number one in PvE with these outdated uh, or less than meta uh, options right even if they have max builds whatever you have a max account but you can get pretty close you can get pretty close and part of the design philosophy for why that's possible is because the game does not ramp the difficulty or sort of not the difficulty they don't ramp the meta-ness right they don't val they don't ramp the power level of characters very aggressively so that's essentially what it comes down to there's like a continuum Right, you picture it as a spectrum where you have a game like Strike Force, where it's like every new update we're releasing the new strongest character, and you just have to deal with it, right? And a lot of card games do this as well, where every new set is just straight up better than the old set, um, and you have to sort of adopt the new set. And this is generally done to um, to appeal to whales, to appeal to very active, very hardcore players who are constantly like <laughs> ravenous monsters, just like slurping up and devouring all of the content immediately right but these kinds of strategies for uh you know continuing a live service product they have a short shelf life right it's like a candle it burns really hot but it burns out really fast so it doesn't really work long term because you have a, another section of players right who are not the ultra hardcore ultra active player base who are casual and they're like you know what i think i'm gonna build namor and it's going to take me like two, three months. This is my next project. And then two, three months passes by and they're like, hmm, who should I build? And they're looking, right? And they're like, you know what? I'm going to build Quicksilver. And so you want to you wanna make this, again, you want to sort of strike this balance between offering the, the ravenous, uh, active, spending player base who are probably financially your biggest supporters. You want to give them something to do. You don't want to you don't want to give them nothing to do. You want to give them something to do, but you also don't want to alienate the other player base, sort of the like the rest of the player base, which also includes free to play players who just can't, uh, you know, invest in every single new character, every single new uniform, whatever. You don't want to alienate them by going too fast. So you have to sort of you have to strike this balance between going fast, but not going too fast. And I actually think, despite all of my criticisms, I do think that Marvel Future Fight um, does a good job of this. And I know that some people who talk to me privately will roll their eyes and say, oh, but Alex, you talked to me in private and you agreed with me that they should make Mr. Fantastic stronger and this and that. And honestly, where I come from in that regard is small buffs are the best option. They're the absolute best option. And I, this is the one gripe, and this is the one huge criticism that I still have with Marvel Future Fight, is that they've essentially abandoned. They've, they've, they've just said, you know what, we're not going to be doing buffs anymore for characters. And we basically get like one to two buffs a year. It's a, it's a fucking miracle when we get a character buffed in the same patch that the character comes out. Or the, whatever, the uniform for the character comes out. It's a miracle if that happens, right? Um, and I'm that I'm disappointed in, because... There's really no downside to saying, hey, we're going to be buffing Mr. Fantastic's um, stats by 5%. We're going to be buffing his damage by 5%. Just small tweaks, you know? I can understand. I Listen, the, the counter argument to what I just said is if they start doing it regularly, then we're going to expect it for every uniform. That's bad. And I 100% agree. I 100% agree that that would be bad. Um, because then every every player would would look at every uniform and be like, yeah, I mean it's good, but we can just wait a week and he's they're gonna slap on an extra five percent. So I'm just gonna wait a week and then I'm gonna build him. 
right and you don't want that right you don't want you don't want to create that that's kind of like an unhealthy kind of negative mindset to to create in your player base so and even if i was building the game like if i had full control over mff i wouldn't do that right i would not i would not build that kind of expectation with players but i would you know what i would put one person in charge uh at the company whatever you know if i if i was working with net marble i would i would put one person in charge of um rebalancing and i would say you know what every time we release an update with at least two uniforms i want you to track the community feedback and at the end of that update cycle whether it's two weeks or a month i want you to choose one of the characters from each of those updates where there was at least two uniforms and i want you to give them a small buff so to put that into words that don't sound like a bunch of jumbled garbage, uh, there would be two update cycles right now from this Fantastic Four update for them to each choose one character. So they would have, from the first cycle, they would have chosen between Mr. Fantastic, Valeria, Franklin, and Invisible Woman, because that was four uniforms released. So they choose one character to buff uh, based on community feedback and sentiment and whatever, and market marketing, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And then from this last update patch where it was Human Torch and Thing, they choose one of those two characters and they buff them. So no surprise here. If it were me, I would choose Thing. Obviously, Human Torch is good. Obviously, Thing is bad. There's just a massive difference between these two characters. One of them has value. Even if it's not for PvP, he's clearly got value. So yeah, let's go ahead and leave him. And this guy's in the shitter. So why don't we just throw this guy a bone, right? Because he's all brick and we'll give him an extra five percent base stats or ten percent base stats or we'll increase his damage by ten percent and then who knows maybe more people adopt him maybe they don't but you know what the data was showing they weren't adopting him anyways when we go over to the rankings and we go to uniform uh things uniform is fucking nowhere to be found look human torch is number two now he's actually more popular recently uh based on the number of mythic upgrades compared to sentry where's thing oh he's all the way down there with quicksilver I see a character from like two months ago. Ah, yes. Uh, and he's there with a character. He, so he's, remember, he's a free character and he's there next to two world boss characters, Thanos and Quicksilver, and a character that costs 6,000 crystals up front. Now, that's not because he's expensive to build. That's because he's shit. He's shitty. He's terrible, right? So they have the data to look at that and say, you know what? Hey, people are not adopting him. And then if you look at the data for Mr. Fantastic and Invisible Woman, Again, it's, it's more of a toss-up there. I don't have the data and the analytics to say so, but maybe they would say, you know what? We want to go from a marketing point of view. Not enough players have adopted the Invisible Woman Deluxe Pack. If we increase her, if we make her a little bit stronger, more people are going to buy crystals so they can buy her, her pack. Again, it's a win-win, right? They get a small bump on uh, the financials and the revenue, and the player base feels like, hey, they're listening to us. They're, we're being hurt. Did they buff everybody from the Fantastic Four? No. Did they buff Franklin's artifact? No. But they did buff Miss uh, Miss Fantastic, uh, you know, Invisible Woman. They did buff Thing, right? So that's what I would do. That's really the one big criticism I have with Marvel Future Fight is that they uh, have abandoned sort of like monthly tweaks to, uh, you know, a small batch of characters or even just one character a month. Even if they just buffed one character per month. And again, it's not a big buff. It's just a little tiny buff. Uh, I think that would go a huge way to, um, you know, continuing the the balance that they've achieved. Because otherwise, if you look at their balancing, their balancing does, I know this is going to sound crazy, but it does favor free-to-play players. It does favor low spenders. Uh, because A, you don't get a lot of value. Like, you don't get an insane advantage by whaling. Like, you get an advantage by whaling, but there's not much to actually win by whaling out. It's not like if you can beat stage 100 of world boss, you get a CTP every single day. And there's guys out there farming Kang stage 99 and getting dropping a CTP every day. And then, oh, but you little poor little Johnny's on, on Kang stage nine and he gets he gets a bunch of dirt and garbage, right? Like people laugh. Uh, and that's why most people are still stage nine enjoyers. People laugh because world boss, right? The difference in the in the reward drops between stage one and stage 99 are not that different. So that favors free-to-play players and low spenders, right? That favors a uh, more casual audience. Uh, if, you know, updates like Fantastic Four, where the, they're not really meta. Updates like uh, at the beginning of the year, Madeline, she was not really meta for that long, and she didn't, like, chokehold the meta. Again, that those types of, of goalposts, they favor lower spenders. They favor a more casual audience. Um, do I want the game to be more casual than it is now? No, I think it's in a, it's in a healthy place between hardcore and casual. Um, but like I said, 
I think it could still be better. So yeah, I wanted to bring this up because it gets asked of me a lot. And I think some people, you know, call me a shill or whatever, because they, they only see me sort of praising updates or giving constructive feedback, but not really talking about this sort of topic where like we kind of need bad updates. But yeah, I would encourage you guys check out that other game and check out what the discourse is like on their Reddit. If you want to see what happens when a game just goes full tilt in the opposite direction and just goes all in on just the hardcore spending player base. It is not pretty. So yeah, hit me up in the comments down below. Let me know what you think on the topic. Thank you so much for watching the video. Smash the like button if you enjoyed the content. I'll try to stop molding an Elden Ring and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.